Hi everyone, welcome back to the ETL series. In the last lecture, we have seen the different components that we use in the Databricks and the theory part of the Databricks, how the different components works and why it is used. And also we have seen the differentiation between the Databricks and the Data Factory. And a part of that, what are the advantages of the Databricks? Why do we use that? Today, I have got a question in my mind. I just wanted to ask you, do you know why is the Databricks actually used for? I would say rather than just doing the transformation, it is actually providing you one more important thing. You are saving your compute and memory utilization to do the transformation in your services, whatever you are using. So let's consider that you are doing the transformation in your Synapse Analytics or maybe in your databases. So using the stored procedure, of course, you will do that or maybe some other functions. But if you do so, then you may face performance degradation. Some users activity may be affected because of this and also the active users will be impacted due to the performance issues. So active user, when I'm saying, the active users are the end users that are who are using this data to do the visualization using different reporting tools such as Power BI or Tableau and also there could be a downtime faced while doing this massive transformation. We should come up with a solution to overcome these problems the database comes into the picture. So here in Databricks, we can do all the massive transformations using the inbuilt cluster feature in the Databricks where you don't have to spend any of the resource that you already have used for some other stuffs in your environment. Now the Databricks, what it will do? It will pull up the data from the sources wherever you have the data. It will do the transformation using its own clusters and inside that cluster you can do the auto scaling and you can even increase the sizes of this cluster and also you can provide the query language that you want to use there. So it could be the PySpark query, it could be SQL, it could be Scala language. A part of this it also provides one more solution while it is getting integrated with the Azure that you can use Azure DevOps, Azure Key Vault and Azure Data Factory to get integrated with your database service. So let's go ahead and start the practice. <laughs> session so for that first let's come to the portal page for azure and here we have to find out what, where is the databricks solution so let's go to all services and find the databricks service then there comes the databricks service uh, so here databricks service is uh, all together combined with azure uh, to provide an unified solution where you can integrate with most of your solution in uh, which is in Azure which is maybe a Synapse Analytics or database uh, which is in SQL plat pass platform or databases in virtual machines as well as you can even integrate it with the DevOps environment in Azure and many more. So let's tr uh, try to create a new Databricks. So in that first click on add new then you can go ahead and fill the basic information that is required there which is first is the resource group so uh, for now i am just typing the resource group name as my rg dash databricks the next comes the workspace name so the workspace name is the name of the databricks service that you are going to create in your azure account so let me keep it as just uit dash Databricks because this is my company Databricks. Let's go ahead and see what all regions I can select. There are many regions, but by default it is East US 2. So I'll select the default one. I don't want to change it. Yeah. And then there comes the pricing tier. In the pricing tier option, you can select what pricing, uh, I mean, what kind of um, price you would prefer. Would it whether it would be standard or premium service? 
or a trial is given for 14 days premium um, service to be used so you will get 14 days to use your Databricks workspace all together at a premium level but there are also few constraints I'll tell you later so for now I'm going to select free trial uh, which is a premium service for 14 days and I will hit on next so next there comes is the networking part so in the networking part there is two options one is to deploy the Azure uh, Databricks workspace with secure cluster connectivity um, without any IP public IP so we would select no which is by default and second is to deploy the Azure uh, Databricks workspace in in your own virtual network so it, this is I mean this is pretty simple the, the statements already states that what do you want this or do you not want this so you can select appropriately as you want and hit on next the next is the advanced section where you can enable the infrastructure encryption so currently my subscription don't allow me to do, do that for, for for further thing you can go ahead and click on learn more option so you can better know about it first and then you can go for it all right so let's hit on the next which is a tagging part so in the tagging part we can tag your resource as per you need uh, that for which uh, of the project that you are going to create this database uh, workspace and then you can hit on next to go and create a review and create the database once the validation is successfully passed so it is the uh, way how you can click on create now when when we hit on create it's it will start deployment at the back end and it will show you this page which is an overview page of which will show you the deployment uh, progress status so I'll pause the video till the time it uh, completes the deployment and we'll come back very soon once the deployment is completed because it may take some time or maybe 5 to 10 minutes so let me come back yeah so I am here I am back here and the deployment is completed and uh, when I see I mean details about the deployment what all services has been created at the back end which is only one service which is uh, Databricks workspace itself now when I click on go to resource it will take me to the Databricks workspace which is actually a Databricks service only created so in that page you will get a URL which will redirect you to the page where you can manage your Databricks clusters and other Databricks parts now when you authenticate with the ad yeah so here is the one point i have missed that so you can integrate your active directory authentication with your azure databricks service so ultimately when you provide access to someone to access the databricks service then only he will be able to access your databricks environment else he won't be having ideally any access to the databricks link or databricks clusters or any services in databricks well now as we are in the portal we can see that we have a free trial which is ending after 14 days you can even upgrade it to premium version in azure portal uh, the link is given there now what are tasks that we can do here is first is we can create a new notebook we can create tables we can create new clusters we can create new jobs we can create new machine learning experience then import your libraries as well as there is a ad hoc link provided to understand how the databricks works and how azure is integrated and most of the things are already demonstrated in the document so you can go through the document and find out if it, it, if it is easier all right so there is another um, another uh, hand where it provides the release notes and the getting started document again and now that we have done with the home page we will go to the cluster page in the cluster page you get an option to create a new cluster whereas you see I don't have any clusters of now 
so now I'm going to create a new cluster by clicking here and first thing is that you have to select a cluster mode what kind of cluster mode you want to select like high concurrent it is it a standard cluster no mode which is required or a standalone then there is a pool option if you have already configured a pool in for your clusters you can select it from the drop down here if not let's keep it for now then uh, there comes the Databricks runtime version it is very important to select the Databricks runtime which runtime you are selecting is more effective in terms of what code you have written in your notebook and it actually should match the runtime version in order to run your code if your code doesn't match to the specific version that you are uh, selecting here which is maybe Scala 2.12 and Spark 3.1.1 so if, you are, if your code is not matching to that you are run your code may break and <clears throat> you might not be successfully able to do the transformation well there is another option called as enable auto scaling so yeah when you um, when you click on enable auto scaling it will show you two options one is to select the minimum worker node and to select the maximum worker node you can select it uh, you can type what all minimum worker nodes you need and how much max it should scale up when the performance is going down and also you can select what type of worker node do you need that is type means the size here so size means uh, what amount of memory do you need what amount of cores CPU cores do you need and so and so forth so you can select it from the drop down whatever you need and there is also a driver type of node so in driver node also you have to select what size do you need and there comes the advanced section so the, in the advanced option you can enable the pass through credentials to enable the services from the ADLS that is Azure Data Lake service oh, oh sorry I have missed to name my cluster so my name cluster name let me let me give it as cluster one so once I do that I'm good to go to create a cluster but right now I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't have enough CPU cores available in my subscription in Azure because I'm using a free trial subscription if you are using the paid subscription or pay as you go you can of course click hit to create a cluster in case I try to create a cluster it could have failed because uh, I have selected two worker nodes which were of four uh, cores each so it goes around eight cores each and my subscription allows me only four cores in one region so this is quite a limitation that I have earlier told you that there is some limitation so this is the one and another thing that I can do here is I can see all my notebooks that I have created in Databricks environment inside this workspace and inside that workspace I can see in the drop down what are notebooks I have created currently I have not select created any notebooks that way I cannot see that well creation of notebook is very simple we can even do it from the home page which is a new notebook and in that we can type a notebook name which is notebook one and you can select your default language what you want to uh, what you want like python scala sql and r4 languages are currently available and you can of course select the one and you can select your cluster node that you have created already I have not created so that's why it's not showing up in the drop down uh, and if I would have select created I could have seen that in the drop down well this is the way how you can create a notebook and write your code inside the notebook to do the transformation that you need well this is all about the Databricks cluster and uh, this is Databricks workspace from inside how it looks in the Azure portal it's very similar to the uh, traditional Databricks but few services like integration with the services are more ad hoc in this place now if we come back to the portal page which is azure portal uh, so i see one option there which is uh, virtual network peering because you have created a workspace in your uh, for your databricks 
so it will create a very brand new uh, virtual network for your clusters and now if you want to integrate that cluster network with your current existing environment you should have created the peering so in order to do that there is an option to create a peering and you have to fill in this information that is the name the virtual network that you want to integrate and blah 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 now i don't want to uh, emphasize more on this because this is uh, off topic uh, we are currently focused on how what all services does azure databricks provides well a part of this one more thing is there that you might be wondering where all the services that are being created inside the database are getting stored so when i say services that means where does the data get stored that is a storage account where is the virtual network that is getting created for this database where is my clusters getting created when i launch it so all that things you can see by your own when you go to the resource group and inside that resource group you can see one resource group automatically created here all the service we can see one is the storage account that automatically get created second is the worker uh, worker uh, nsg that is network security group for your network that is getting created for your workspace so this is a worker of vnet which is also getting created by default and whenever you launch any cluster that also you can view it here but actually you cannot access that server or a cluster it will look just like a virtual machine but you cannot access it by um, ad hocly uh, without using the databricks so this is something um, which is a security perspective all right so this is all about the databricks if you like please click on the like and comment down below what you want from me in the next lectures thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day bye